Hello everyone. Welcome to the session of SAP Data Archiving. In the previous session, we discussed on archiving object configuration, database and table analysis. After analysis phase is completed, we can start data archiving using archiving object. So in this session, we will discuss in detail about data archiving using SARA transaction code. That is executing of write jobs, delete jobs, monitoring data archiving process and managing archive sessions. As discussed in the earlier sessions, each archiving object provides the programs for write, delete, read, etc. These functions are viewed as push buttons in SARA transaction code. The functions provided by SARA transaction include pre-processing, write, delete, post-processing, index, storage system and management. Note that all the functions are not offered by all archiving objects. To view the functions offered by archiving object, we will provide the archiving object name in the SARA transaction code and click on the enter button. It will display the functions offered by that specific object. In the figure, we can see the functions offered by fi underscore document archiving object. Let us now see how to start a write session for an archiving object. Initially, go to SARA transaction code and provide the archiving object name. From the functions displayed, select write action button. Then we need to maintain the variant for write session by clicking on maintaining button. After maintaining the variant, determine the user under which the session need to be started and provide the username along with the start time and date. Lastly, define the spool parameters and execute. This triggers the write program for the respective archiving object. When maintaining the spool parameters, please keep in mind that the job logs can be large. So, it is not advisable to issue the log immediately to the printer. Let us have a look on defining variants for the write session. We know that while performing write action, we need to maintain the variant. This variant provides the required parameters to the related archiving write program. These parameters differs from one archiving object to other. Hence, the variant screen varies for each archiving object. Along with the input parameters respective to the archiving object, we also have some other components in the variant selection screen which are common for all archiving objects. Now, let us have a look at these common components in the variant selection screen. Under processing options, you can specify in which mode a program should run, that is, either in the test mode or in the production mode. We have a possibility to choose a business object specific logs as a standard log or detailed log for this write program. This log provides information about which business objects were processed and which could not be processed and why. We also have log output field which decides whether the business object specific log should be written to a spool list or not. The last field we have is the archive session note, where you can enter the archive session note directly when you create the variant for the write program. Here you can see the sample variant screen for fi underscore document archiving object. The selection criteria for fi underscore document include the options like company code, document number, physical year or period, document type, minimum number of days in the system and key date. The key date is the reference date 
for verifying the document type life and account type life. The minimum number of days is subtracted from the key date and all the documents after this date are ignored at the time of data selection. Along with the above selection, we can see there are common components in the variant screen. Under processing options, we selected the production mode. We have given an option for no detailed log and log output to be spool list and an archiving note. After filling all the required fields, maintain the attributes for this variant and save it. This is how the variants are maintained for a write program. Please make a note that variant screen differs for each archiving object depending on the required parameters for the respective write program. Once write action is triggered, the data from database is read and written to the archive files. One archive write job creates one or more archive files based on size of data in the database. On completion of write job, we need to trigger the delete jobs. As discussed in the earlier sessions, the delete jobs can be customized to run automatically or manually. Let us see the steps to schedule the delete jobs manually. Initially, go to SARA transaction, provide the archiving object name and click on delete action button. First, specify the user under which the archive files need to be deleted. Then, select the archive files by clicking on archive selection button. After that, specify the start date and time and define the spool parameters. Finally, execute it. This triggers individual delete job for each archive file. After starting archive process, it need to be monitored and controlled. Archive logs, statistics and job logs are the major sources of information used for monitoring this archiving process. Once we are done with execution of write or delete archive program, these jobs can be monitored using job overview, job log or spool log. Job overview shows the background jobs executed for an archiving object. From there, we can select a particular archiving job and can branch to job log or spool. Job log contains all the messages sent by the program running in the background. Spool provides a list that was generated by archiving program. Application log is an application specific and can contain the information about processed business objects. Here we can see how to view the job overview for an archiving object and branch to the job log or spool log. In the SARA transaction, provide the archiving object name and click on job icon. It displays all the jobs executed for that particular archiving object. Select the required job and click on the job log for displaying the job log. If you want to see the spool associated with this job, select the job and click on spool option. The spool list of an archive job begins with log for archiving session and archive files followed by log on the processed business object. The archiving session specific and archive file specific log contains information about processed archive files and archive sessions. The information in these includes the archive session number, the size of archive file in MB, the affected tables and the number of processed table entries. 
the business object specific log provides information about which business objects were processed and which could not be archived and why. This may be a summarized log or detailed log as per the selection in the variant screen. This is how the spool is displayed for an archive job. The other way to view archiving logs is to go to SARA transaction and click on logs button. On the left side of the screen, we can see already existing job logs sorted by archiving object action such as write and delete along with date and time. In the processing options column, you can see whether the program was started in the test mode or in production mode. The archiving session number column displays the number of archiving session. The business object specific log appears directly on the right hand side of the log display. If it is not generated, the system issues a corresponding message. This log function has an advantage that we can view several different logs from one central place. When you select an archiving session and right click on it, you can branch to job log, spool list or application list as well. After data archiving, Companies usually try to determine what they have gained from archiving the data. Therefore, it is useful to know how much space is gained in database after archiving. To view these statistics, go to SARA transaction and click on statistics button. This gives the information about the space gained from write jobs delete jobs, etc. Archive write jobs, delete jobs are completed and they have created the archiving sessions and files. To view this management data, go to SARA transaction code, provide the archiving name and click on management push button. This displays an overview of archiving sessions with errors, incomplete and completed. The archiving session with green light indicate the data was archived and deleted. The archiving session with yellow light indicates the data was only archived but not deleted. If the archiving session is with red light, it indicates an error occurred during write phase. From the management screen, we can also view the archive file storage details and the user input by choosing the relevant option as shown in the figure. Please make a note that admi underscore run is the management table for archiving sessions and admi underscore files is the management table for archiving files. These management sessions can also be archived using bc underscore archive object. In this session, we discussed about executing archiving write job and archiving delete job. We also discussed about monitoring these jobs and managing the archiving sessions. For more videos on SAP Data Archiving, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.